As the days grow colder and the nights grow longer, all you need is a nice warm blanket, a cup of warm cocoa, and the smooth sounds of Tom and Zeus on the Shout It Out Loudcast, the ultimate kiss podcast. This is Jay Scott from The Hook Rocks, and I get all my kiss info from the Shout It Out Loudcast with Tom and Zeus. What's up there, Kiss Army? Ace and Zeus with another episode Shout It Out Loudcast, episode 45. We're calling this one a very best of kiss. Uh, wait, where the fuck am I? Who the fuck are you two? It's Tom and Zeus. <laughs> I don't know, drunken ace took over, but uh, Tom, how the fuck are you? Oh, I was hoping that was like really ace for a minute. This would, that would have been a spectacular episode with that guy. Oh, someone made a recommendation that I try to do this whole episode as ace. <laughs> it was like <laughs> drunken ace, and we're like, no, if you just ace, you are drunken ace. That's, 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 so, that's yeah, how you don't have to pretend. Yeah, there's only one ace. So, <laughs> yeah, oh, exactly. My God. Oh, um, life, how's it doing? <laughs> For good man, freezing up here. We're in New England where it's already winter time and it's only November. We're freezing up here, dude. Yeah, keep all the all all those politicians campaigning up in New Hampshire, keeping you warm. Oh God, don't even get me going. A bunch of bozos. Yeah. yeah, but you're in southern New Hampshire. You should be running into some of them signs, people fighting, taking lawn signs off each other's houses and Fucking fist fights at the school playgrounds with people holding signs up. That usually oh. happens. That that'll happen next fall. That's when people start getting fired up and, like you said, ripping down signs and shit. <laughs> Ugh, awful. Anyways, um, so we had a, a good, interesting week of kiss news. Oh, what do you? Want? Oh, let's uh. Let's talk about our feedback before we get into the news, right? Yeah, we had a, there was a lot going on last week. We had, uh, you know, the Kiss Cruise and all that crazy news and our our uh, strong opinions on everything that went down. Um, you know, yeah. for, for the most part, we get feedback that's positive. That we're negative. That we're yeah, not. True. You know, happy go luckies. Tom says giving Kiss foot rubs all day long. You know, I, I want to make sure that we're not going too above and beyond that we're not seen as just negative. But, you know, there's certain times, certain things that Kiss does that just, you know, doesn't work for us. And that wasn't. So one of the things we didn't discuss last week, Tom, and I was just showing it to Tom. I saw a Q&A uh, of Eric, Tommy, and then Bruce came on. I was just showing it to Tom before we went on. And the first question asked was literally to Eric and Tommy about, you know, a lot of people don't like that you put the makeup on and people get mad. It was uh, about 10 minutes versus of, uh, of basically honest Eric and Tommy, where Eric was just like, you know what, to be honest, I don't give a fuck that people complain about it. You know, if you could be in Kiss and you're a drummer, you're going to say no. He's like. It's not an emotional thing for me. I get it that it is. And I don't want to hear people tell me shit about, oh, you're not into Kiss. He's like, I was into Kiss probably before anybody that was in that audience. He's like, I was there. It's just not an emotional thing. I'll put the makeup on. It's the music. But it's not a big deal. And Tommy says, like, you know, isn't this fucking old by now? You know, you know, it's not a big deal. But I found it refreshing. And then, Tommy, you made the point to me. About, go ahead. What what did you say to me when you saw that video? Yeah, so it was the first time I had seen it, and the first thing I said was, "Can you imagine Gene, <laughs> or especially Paul, ever answering a question with such honesty as I don't give a fuck, or like not having that guy literally walk the plank? Yep, <laughs> exactly. Ocean. Yeah, no, because Tommy even said the same thing. Tommy's like. Tommy's like, if they asked you to be in the band today, w would you be in the band and put on the makeup? Yeah, of course you would. Why wouldn't you? It's Kiss. Uh, I'm offended. Yeah, the makeup. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it was, it was, 
I, I'm not, I'm not surprised that either one of them said that, but it was just, it was refreshing to, uh, to hear it. So, um, yeah, it was, it, it was, it was cool. It was definitely cool. So any other thoughts? No, that was no. I mean, it was, it was just interesting to see. I wish we had seen it before. Um, you know, so we could have included it last week, but that's okay. We'll keep talking about the kiss crew. So, yeah. Yeah. We got a, we got a lot of good, good back the episode. A lot of people loved it. And we're saying literally, we love how you guys, you know, tell it like it is. Yeah. Or, or a lot of people agreed with us about some of the stuff being bullshit. We had a few people point out in a positive way, like what the actual show cost and corrected us about, you know, you get to see one thing. I think you got all that info, right, Tom? Yep. Yep. Somebody commented on the fact that the set lists for the shows inside were the, were, were the same because apparently you get to go to one or the other. So that's why the set lists were identical, I guess. Uh, and again, we, we, we prefaced it from the beginning of the episode that we've never been on the Kiss Cruise, and our comments were based on what we saw on social media and YouTube. So, you know, we welcome that feedback. You know, we don't know at all. So any anybody that does know stuff or has comments to add, by all means, share them with us, and and, and uh, we appreciate that, definitely. Yeah, and we also had a, a – uh, we almost uh, caused an accident. Joey Casada, our friend – <laughs> that he almost drove into the, like a, a ditch or something because uh, I think he was a big fan of us talking about uh, one of the kiss packages was fucking Tommy <laughs> shooting hot dogs out of one of those fucking <laughs> shotgun machines on people on the rack after them for their lunch on the platinum edition. Um, we have a ton of that stuff, you know, and to be honest with you, I think originally that shit was like the Craig gas. Oh yeah, when he did on the cruise, which is hilarious, like pretending he was Gene and the ship was going down, and people could purchase like different packages to be saved. That was hilarious, absolutely fucking hilarious. And uh, Joey reached out and told us, and uh, hats off to you, Joey. We love you. So, um, anyways, um, where else you want to get back into the news? Yeah, this there's a lot to cover. Um, so we're recording this on Thursday, and uh, just last night on Wednesday, the big Kiss story broke that um, Kiss has now canceled their entire Australian tour. Um, originally, the story broke earlier that they had canceled, I think it was a New Zealand show because of Paul having the flu, um, but they just announced late last night uh, that they canceled the entire tour. Um they said that he has that Paul not only has the flu, but he has a throat infection that requires complete medical rest and medication. Um, and that he, you know, it, kind of the doctor's orders are not permitting him to fly, uh, you know, to make that flight. Um, so, you know, and then on top of that, we're, we're going to cover that in a minute. I'm just going to kind of piggyback that story with this because also is uh, right around that in that area. Um, you know, I'm not a fucking Rand McNally geographer here, but the story of the st- the story about them going on the ship and playing the music for the fucking sharks, that whole thing. Um, <laughs> you remember that, right? They're gonna just, just the, the fact just explain that, that to somebody. <laughs> just, I know, just saying that out loud. Seriously, the fact that I just said that sentence. It, I know. So, anyway, it says. Kiss have canceled their Australian tour due to illness, but organizers of the Shark concert near Port Lincoln said it will still go ahead. Um, they said that the guy who's in charge of that boat, where they're going to be performing under, you know, a, on the deck, so that the music reverberates, so the sharks get all fucking crazy, whatever. I don't know. I can't believe I'm talking about this, but anyways, that's supposed to be on next Monday, November eighteenth. Um, and the guy said, as uh, because that event is a is a promotion, um, it's different than a tour. Um, and they said that the band will is still performing that event, but they're probably going to be doing it without Paul. Um, but the big thing that I took out of this, go ahead, go ahead, no, go ahead, yeah, no, go ahead, finish, shut. I was just going to say the big thing I took out of this was <laughs> it says. <laughs> So far, eight tickets have been sold. <laughs> yeah, I don't understand. Dude, what that. the fuck? Dude, what is this eight tickets have been sold? 
say two thousand dollars or pop or something. If they're like a hundred bucks or fifty bucks, how can it only eight tickets be sold? I don't know. I guess I, I guess that's why they do. I don't know. It says eight tickets were sold to fans to the concert at sea. Will they be able to watch them perform on a deck and watch below as the approaching sharks? Sound is known as an underwater stimulus for marine life, and according to blah blah, blah they show preferences towards heavy rock music. Damn, what the fuck is going on here? I mean, really? Eight. First of all, what's this worse is, than playing on a fucking boat for sharks or eight people buying tickets for it? This is the kind of shit that fucking the idiots at you know the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame are like. This is why I want Kiss in the Hall of Fame. Like, just like it's just stupid gimmicks. Like, what the fuck is this? Literally jump in the shark. Literally, yeah. Now, stupid shit. Like now, once that story broke, what was the what started happening? Rumors. So after that, yeah, yep. rumors. And so, in a in a nice, um, in our text exchange with our friends at Grown Up Rock and Potter Than Hell, we're all shitting on each other like we do every day. So me and Tommy are going at it back and forth because Tommy says that he saw on a Kiss Australian Facebook page, yep. which is why I say to him, yeah, you read it on a Kiss Australian Facebook page, but tell him what you saw or read. Uh, just just paraphrase it. Like I'll paraphrase it. So the reason usually we don't we don't get into like, you know, rumors, et cetera, et cetera. But th- this this person on this Kiss Australia Facebook group had some l- I had a little bit of information, you know, or well, maybe I get a little bit of information. <laughs> maybe I'll give you some information. I like, cause I, I like to have some information. So the guy starts off by saying, you know, I hate to be this person, you know, blah, blah, blah. So he says it was, it looked like the band were going to end up performing to half empty arenas in Australia. He says Perth was virtually untouched with tickets available in every section. Adelaide had tickets available. Melbourne wasn't sold out. Um, Newcastle wasn't even their own gig. It was a, a festival. Sydney had plenty of seats. Wasn't even half sold out. Um, Brisbane was kind of sold. Um, and it said that the only reason that Kiss are going to the gig at Sea with the Sharks is because it's a one-off contractual obligation that they can do it. Um, so, of course, the rumors now are, is Paul sick? Or are they canceling this entire thing in Australia because tickets weren't selling and the tickets that were being sold, they would have played at half half empty venues. And who wants to do that? Look, I, I I don't. At first, when the story broke, I was like, "Oh shit, Paul's old. Paul's sick. What's happening here?" But I'm not completely immune to believing that there might be something to the ticket sales. I, I don't know. I guess we're never gonna know. Um, you know, and I hate to feed into like the toxic face group mentality here. Um, but. You know, it it does look like that there is a little suspicion here as to what's going on in Australia. Um, we'll never know. Maybe some of our uh, Australian friends out there that listen to the show, maybe they have more information being right there at the scene. Um, but the unfortunate thing is that now it's going to lend itself to the rumor mill. So, and Zoo- so me and you were going back and forth with fucking flying insults as we do. Like, and I just look at it and, and we're like, half of us are like, save it for the episode, save it for the episode. Um, it's nonsense. You listen to a fucking guy from a kiss pot. I mean, kiss Facebook group about as much credibility as an idiot from a kiss podcast group. But I'm saying like, you know, number one, the first thing I always think about is kiss is huge in Australia. I'm sure the prices there are the same as the prices in the U S relative to that economy. And I remember hearing a podcast and other people, oh, yeah, the tour, I'm hearing the yeah half-empty seats. Yeah, you can still get seats over here. Yeah, you can. I heard podcasts, because I listen to Kiss Podcasts, all, a bunch of them saying the same thing. And guess what? After the first part of this tour, I didn't hear any concert that had anything but, you know, sold out or close to being sold out. So there was a lot of podcasts talking about areas in concerts. Gee, yeah, there's still a lot of tickets left. Yeah, half the buildings are, haven't been sold yet. And then by the time this came around, sold. Now, I'm not saying that this couldn't happen. I just don't buy it because of those two things. I've seen it before. Unless it's a promotion or somebody else saying it, fans or 
you know, somebody on a Facebook kiss group saying it. And they're popular in Australia. And Paul is sick, just like the concerts that were canceled with Gene early. Oh, and then, you know, oh, my God, there's a scheduling conflict. What? All of a sudden, the last couple concerts, Kiss can't sell out, but they sold out mid fucking West and they sold out, you know, fucking the south of the Mason Dixon line. They sold out, but they can't sell out California. They can't sell out Australia. I don't think so. So. Until I see somebody say poor ticket sales from an official concert promoter, an official rock journalist with credentials, not fucking Joey Butterfingers from fucking the down under. I'm talking real people or the group saying, yeah, sales weren't that good. So we had to cancel and not canceling a lucrative tour. Now, what I probably believe is Paul's fucking sick. His voice, it's easier to say. His voice is bad enough these days. They can't go into anything with him, his voice being even worse. They just can't. So they've got to cancel it. He needs to get his voice, whatever fucking steroids or shit they're giving him to finish these, this tour they can't go into it without it being at a hundred percent at his capability these days. So they fucking canceled it. You don't think they can come up with things exclusive Australian tour on its own and make it up down the line. There's no way, in my opinion, unless one of them dies, that they don't go back to Australia at some point. I know they're saying no. Now they will. Maybe on the 50th anniversary of Kiss, they'll just do a couple dates in Australia. They'll be back, in my opinion. That's just me talking. Tom, back to you. Yeah, the reason why your original argument doesn't hold any water with me is that you, you were saying that early on that there were there were rumors of tickets, you know, oh, they're selling half arenas and blah, blah, blah. Okay, the problem there is that those shows weren't canceled and they performed, so it proved to be rumors. These shows are canceled now. So now my opinion, but they're not canceled have, out of the blue, buddy. They're canceled because he is sick. He got we, sh- he got the wait a minute. Shits. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. his hand at the buffet line. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Those dates are coming up soon. Okay, that's why it's canceled. Now all I'm saying is I don't think. Look, we love the band. Let's just get that out of the way. All I'm saying is there's nothing wrong with a little bit of healthy skepticism to be like, hey, you know what? That would fucking blow if they canceled an entire tour because of poor ticket sales. The rumors earlier were rumors because those shows weren't canceled and they ended up performing. Now, these rumors, in my opinion, have to be at least visited with a little bit of credibility only because the shows are now canceled. And if Paul has the flu and a throat problem, I know he's an older man. I know he's not our age or even younger. You know, you go from you go from canceling a New Zealand show to cancel an entire tour. I'm not saying that he's not sick. I'm just saying, you know, I'm a conspiracy theorist by nature, so I don't want to believe it. But I think think, you know, we'll never know. That's all I'm saying. I don't agree with that because not number one, uh, number one, I'm an attorney. I don't give a fuck. I'm not going to tell you everything is 99 percent. I don't say anything's 100 percent in life. There's not a hundred percent chance that the fucking sun doesn't melt tomorrow. Nothing. I mean, in that it won't. I'm just telling you, I don't believe that this is going to happen. I just don't say at a hundred percent that. Yeah, I guarantee a hundred percent what I'm saying is accurate because I wouldn't guarantee that about right. anything. Right. But I am telling you, in my opinion, it's nonsense. It's nonsense because I've heard these rumors before, and they're always by toxic Facebook group people. I'm not saying this person is, but right. I'm just saying it's not an official person in capacity of like but the problem. But the problem with that is though, you're never going to hear an official person say tour canceled, poor ticket sales. You're never going to hear that. You've heard any- that about other people of, about stuff, about poor ticket sales of concerts and you'll stuff. never hear it about kiss. You think Paul or Gene would ever Paul's allow never going to personally say that you but think they would allow it stuff. You think they would allow a promoter or a publicist to say poor ticket sales had to cancel? No way. Never. I, I, I just disagree. I think that it would get out. There's nothing they could do about it. It would well, get it out. Ha- it hasn't even been 24 hours since the story broke, so who knows? 
again, I, I don't don't make I don't want to make it sound like I'm hoping that that's the case. I'm just saying I would say that it's in my opinion 90% chance inaccurate that they canceled the whole tour because it's because of poor ticket sales. I, I hope you're right because he's sick and they're yeah. like he's going to miss two or three of the shows and they're like that whole fucking thing is so lucrative to us in Australia. Let's just take it off. We can't do it right now. Maybe we can find a time and circle back to it and we'll do it better promoter. And maybe maybe of ticket sales so they don't do four nights in Australia, they do three nights. I don't right. know. And they build it back up again. You yeah, never we'll know, right. but I just don't believe it's bad ticket sales. Because it's just there's I don't know. There's just too much too much like happiness if shit is going wrong with KISS. After they just ended everything they ended on this legs of, leg of the tour on a positive note, selling everywhere they go, selling out, all of a sudden now they can't sell shit? I mean, come on. I, I, I just I know. don't buy it. It's just fucking the Eddie Trunks of the world, the Stewarts of the world. You know, it, that's just yeah. my opinion. Um, okay. So let's next move on. Gonna, yeah. So today they announced um, – when tickets are going to go on sale for that the U.S. leg, the shows that the shows that we're going to go to, um, but there's there's some interesting thing, and I, I kind of want to have this be like a, a, maybe a little public service announcement from your friends at Shouted Out Loudcast. Mm-hmm. Um, those screenshots that went around on the Kiss Cruise about the first U.S. leg and the second U.S. leg, um, for us, the second U.S. leg originally indicated that they would be playing in Mansfield, Massachusetts on August 28th of next year. The tickets right. went on Ticketmaster or Live Nation um, put out all the dates, the pre-sales, everything. They're coming to Mansfield on September 4th, which is the Friday of Labor Day weekend. So it was originally announced August 28th. It's now Friday, September 4th. So public service announcement. Double check when these things are going on in your city, because if you were planning based on what you saw from the Kiss Cruise, things may change because they did change for us here in New England. Um, Good call. So a, lot of, a, so a lot of those tickets are going on sale next week. A lot of them have pre-sales, you know, Kiss Army pre-sales, you know, if certain credit cards offer pre-sales. So keep your eye on that. Those are all going on sale. I think uh, most of them next week. So, Good call. And um, finally in the news. I'm a Grammy Grammy winning producer. I'm a Grammy winning producer. So I don't care what you tell me. I'm a Grammy winning producer. But I have friends. I I had my friend Lemmy. I have my friend Meatloaf. But wait, hold on. I have a question for you. Aren't you the guy that wrote that SpongeBob song? You are. Aren't you the guy that wrote Sweet Victory, the SpongeBob song? You are. Isn't that you? I am. Okay. That's me. I'm a Grammy winning producer. Okay. You a replacement podcast li- uh, host. That's true. I was I originally do this podcast with Johnny Coolballs, and yep. you came in. Yeah, that's all you are. Yeah, replacement podcast host. Yeah, and I and, and I can't did, be tru- and you can't be trusted. You no. can't. And I did podcasts you with Lemmy. I, I, I did a podcast with Lemmy. You wouldn't last ten minutes doing a podcast with Lemmy. Not like me. And I put my electric bill in your name. Even though you were on the le- you were on the lease, and you lived there for several months, you know what you did? You know what you did? You know what else I did? <laughs> I wrote the theme for Triple H. You think you think anything Kiss did can compare to that? No way. Yeah, and Triple H, like, can you get? Let me. Hey, I'll take care of it. I'll get. Let me just sing. I'll tell Lemmy and Lemmy will do it because I'm saying it. And and I'm the guy that got the, you know, the look down that I look like a fucking M guy. Did I also tell you that I look like a magician from the 80s? <laughs> And I was stuck in Sudan and I didn't eat for fucking four weeks and I look anorexic. But that's me. But you want a Grammy. I want a Grammy. I'm a Grammy winning producer. Hold on. Let me eat my let me eat my dinner 
throughout the whole episode. All he uh, needs to do is go on a different podcast. <laughs> and I got a poster of you from the Facebook group. Just poster fucking group. <laughs> yeah, you did. Because <laughs> yeah, I'm in a Facebook group. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm a Grammy <laughs> producer. <laughs> yeah. Dude. Dude. Stop eating in the oh. middle of your fucking podcast. Oh, dude. I'm fucking dying right now. So for the people who may not be aware of what we were just doing, that's Bob Kulik. And um, God ahead, bless him. I think he's a talented ho- uh, hockey player. He's a talented <laughs> goalkeeper scorer <laughs> for the Los Angeles Kings. He's a talented guitar player, but he's, you know, he's lost it. He's out of his fucking mind. I ain't buddy, the the level, yeah. And I, uh, you know, what Kiss needs to do is put the real, the whole Kiss on the fucking, you know, fucking dig up the ghost of Mark St. John. He needs to be on the final concert of the End of the Road tour, and then they need to hire me to write the song End of the Road. Psst, how brilliant is that? Me, I'll do it, and I'm a producer. And they need to hire me. I'll produce it. It's it's really honestly well like all jokes aside I know I know we're having fun here and everything. It's really bizarre. If you guys have not listened to the interview by the Metal Voice, um, Jimmy did a, an amazing job. Um, just just letting you know. And, and again, we said last week Mitch Lafon did a nice job too. But you know, again, Bob Kulik, all the credit in the world for everything he contributed to Kiss. But he is he has full-blown unraveled the poor man yeah and he's got uh, and an it's, open invitation to come on here anytime but bob what the <laughs> fuck you yeah. need a pr guy because god knows you are a talented player yep but what the fuck buddy what the fuck calm down first of all you need to know this and we say this all the time i don't believe there's anybody of the four in kiss with maybe the exception of Eric Carr, that is as well liked and respected by all as Bruce Kulik in Kiss. Can't Absolutely. think of anybody. He may be the most well liked. You know they do favorables and unfavorable politicians. Yeah, Eric Carr and him would probably win. You know, God bless Eric Carr. I've never heard a negative thing about him, other than Paul Stanley since Eric's passed. Um, of course, you know, but. You know, Eric has passed and he has that. You know, he's going to get a little bit more. But Bruce Kulik is a fucking awesome guy. Just watch Bruce when he does those videos on social media. So well liked, so happy to be in, like a part of history. He just he comes just, across like such a nice guy that you want to know. This guy's the guy that you want to call the devil, basically. Yeah. It, it, I mean, in that interview, and I highly, highly urge any Kiss fan out there to to check that um, interview uh, on the Metal Voice. Um, I mean, he just he eviscerates everybody. He eviscerates Keith Larue. He eviscerates oh, Ace. Yeah. He eviscerates his brother, the <laughs> band. I mean, it's really. I mean, he just goes through everybody with a flamethrower that he's ever come across. In but his in the career. meantime, he has a demand. Yeah, make it up to me by having me produce a single called end of the road and i have to produce it but then in the end bring all the people on at the end of the road tour and uh end tour the last concert like steve ferris himself uh Dude, who he, else he's well, fucking Dick he's a, is dead isn't he I like, don't even who know, else like but, right he's just insane it, it's too it's too yeah like they also and that's i mean last episode the last uh concert to go on stage are you fucking out of your mind that's ne- they're not in kiss that's why they're called session players or ghosts but oh yeah I, I think he did the best guitar player of all the guitar solo from creatures to the night the best guitar playing of all time in kiss that's what yeah. yeah, I get it all the time. You know, I me mean, people learn how to be a guitarist from me from doing uh larger than life solo. That song was a 30 song, 30 second song. My solo made it a long enough. Oh my 
God. Yeah. Buddy. It, 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 it's crazy. It's a way your contacts, your relationship. Calm the fuck down. It's like he met up with Ace's girlfriend and said, let's fucking burn it down. Either that or it's like he met up with fucking Stuart and said, hey, I got a good idea. Go on and rip up everyone you've ever come across in the Kiss, in the Kiss uh, family. Just torch them. I'll, t- I'll give you all the talking points on who to shit on. Yeah, he says he was like best of friends with Paul Stanley. What the yep. fuck are you doing, buddy? Well, what I mean, how, what what what's a bigger sign that you're best friends than when you sign over your fucking cable bill to somebody, right? <laughs> I mean, that right there. That's that's how you know you're good friends. <laughs> you're talking about being like a squatter. It's <laughs> a plummet. Like what the fuck, dude? God bless Crazy. you. Wish you luck in the future, man. All right. Okay. Um uh, that's Bob, and hopefully we hear from him someday, and we can have a nice conversation about this. But oh, anyways, real quick, real quick before we t- kind of turn the corner yeah. here, guess who else we heard from? And all he said was, "I got to give him credit here." All he said was that he's open to participating in the end of the road show, and that was Vinnie Vincent. That's all he said. He didn't come out and and go through everybody with a friggin' machine gun like Bob did. He's like, yeah, I'd be open to it if they call me. You know, that'd be a nice event, blah, blah, blah. So I was like, all right, a little restrained Vinnie Vincent there. So that was cool. But last time he was with Gene, he wasn't treated very nicely. Well, he he wasn't treated very nicely at at the vault. He can snuggle up with his fleece Vinnie blanket. (laughs) (laughs) With his his cats (laughs) God All right. Uh, so before we get into the topic Tomas uh, Give me a second while I go play rock and roll Night My uh, 50th uh, Kiss compilation CD Hello Barbara We're back again and here we go with another Compilation so we're doing the very best of Kiss. So these compilation CDs, Tomas, we are uh, these are you know short and sweet episodes. We talk about the 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 uh, you know the tracks. Compare it to other compilation. We talk about what's missing, what should have been on there, and we you know what era, when was this done? Does it cover all eras? Um, the very best of Kiss. Okay, so this came out two thousand and two. Uh, it's got twenty one tracks. It, it um, actually gold sold about eight hundred thousand copies, according to Wikipedia, and we know that's accurate. Um, so a gold um, record. What else is new with Kiss? Who holds the most for an American band? Right, most yep. gold albums. Yep. So the tracks go like this. I'm going to name them all 21 tracks, Tom. Go they ahead. start with Strutter, Deuce, Got to Choose, Hell, Come On and Love Me, Rock and Roll All Night, Detroit Rock City, Shout It Out Loud, Beth, I Want You, Calling Dr. Love, Hard Luck Woman, I Stole Your Love, Christine 16, Love Gun, New York Groove, I Was Made for Loving You, I love it loud. Lick it up forever. God gave rock and roll to you. Almost. Uh, Tom, what do you think? Well, the first thing I think of about this is when it came out. I mean, yep. it, it, th- th- this was released kind of like in a dead zone for kiss. So this came out in August of 2002. Um, and I think this was kind of like a placeholder it appears for so people would know that kiss is still around because in 2002 um you know they they started off the year by uh doing something at the winter olympics um you know then they did a concert in jamaica then they did dick clark um that was it really uh, and and so they they put this out near the end of 2002 and again like i said i think it was kind of like a placeholder uh so people would keep kiss on the in the consciousness so let let me let me point out something on this. Yep. Um, Kiss did Relation Greatest Hits was double platinum seventy eight. They did Killers, which added four new tracks. They did Kara in eighty eight and Smashes, Thrashes, and Hits in eighty eight. They did Greatest Kiss in ninety seven, which we just discussed. Then they come back 
with this. This is when the, the golden age of compilations, they come back with this album, Very Best, and then and they start on a rampage after 2002. Millennium, Millennium 2, 2003's Millennium, Millennium 2, 2004, Gold, 2005, Millennium 3, 2006, Jigaku Rex, 2008, Kiss 40, 2014. Never mind box sets that came out, okay? Uh, yep. Like, icons kiss alive box sets and other stuff um so you know this this is the start of it all and this is when we start getting all these kiss compilations um before we get into the track what do you think of the artwork and the presentation well i'll start off by saying i think the artwork is uh spoiler alert the probably the best part of this compilation okay so the so the cover is kind of cool. It has four close-up shots of the original members, almost like alternative shots to like the solo albums, you could say. Um, then you open up the booklet, and it's got a you know a kick-ass destroyer error um, group photo. Um, then you open up the the entire thing, and it's um you know kind of like a like a foggy you know live stage uh, photo. The backside foggy, of the booklet, foggy foggy leg one. F- fry, you mean I fry? Say, I say, I there's a kiss album out. <laughs> ah, you mean Froggy? <laughs> and then the inside, the back of the booklet has a has a picture of them from uh, Paul Lynn's the Halloween the special. Segment. Is that what you yeah. said? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's got a picture from Paul Lynn's Halloween special. And then when you take the CD out, um, inside it's got a live. You know, uh, it looks like you know from the one of the most more recent tours of that time. And the same with the back cover. So it's got it's got all yeah, mixed so got stuff. The reunion pictures mixed yep. in with the old Kiss pictures, and it's all the original four members in all the pictures. Yeah, and the beginning front has the four images with yep. a little bit of a different Im- like coloring to it. You yep. know, face pictures of them. Um, you know, which is interesting. Kiss the very best. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's interesting cover. I wouldn't say it's. Oh my god, blows me away. It's decent. Yeah. Yeah, it's. I mean, it, it's good. I mean, it, it, it's interesting because, it, like you said, it's got a it's got a, a bunch of classic pictures and the newer ones. Um, but it says the very best of Kiss. There's a couple different eras on the album, but only the original four members are represented on all the artwork. Yeah. So unlike Greatest Kiss, this has non makeup Kiss and non original member Kiss, like you just said. Uh, on this track so as we read the tracks on here um you know we went through the list so i guess the first thing tom is that i would ask you what is missing in your opinion from this set list of 21 songs missing yeah okay well i think they tried to touch on some of the makeup era with lick it up forever. And God gave rock and roll to you, but non makeup you're talking about non makeup. I'm sorry. Yeah. I made a mistake there. Sorry. So lick it up forever. God gave rock and roll to you, but they skipped, you know, where's heavens on fire. Where's tears of fallen. Where's crazy nights or a representation from those albums. Um, you know, and another thing too, real quick about this compilation compared to greatest kiss, greatest kiss had multiple, different international versions very yeah. best of kiss had nothing the, what you see here with these 21 songs it was the exact same wherever you bought it anywhere in the world so what i counted on this, this is what wasn't representing on this album no kiss alive two tracks no paul stanley peter chris gene Simmons solo tracks nothing from unmask the elder the four songs from killers nothing from Lies, Asylum, Crazy Nights, or the two songs from Smashes, Thrashes, and Hits. Revenge, you can kind of say roll to you. Uh, nothing from Carnival and nothing from uh, Cycle Circus. Now, Sonic Boom and Monster came out in 2009 and 2012. Respect, they don't count. So right. as of that era, I look at this, Tom, and I say to myself, okay, I hate Cycle Circus, but maybe that song should have been there. Here's what I think doesn't is that I can't believe. 
And look, you only put in 21 songs in there. I would look at this and I would say, you're missing Black Diamond, Cold Gin. If I'm going real, like, classic of the classics, um, you know, Firehouse, 100,000 Years, Watching You, Let Me Go Rock and Roll, She, eh, they're right borderline. But real quick, real, real quick. Real, real, Real quick, real quick, if I could cut you off, I'm sorry, I don't mean to do this. Before we break it down album by album, I just wanted to make a general statement that there are 21 songs here, okay? 18 of them are makeup songs, and 15 of the 21 are from the first six albums. Yeah. So, so go ahead. What's missing, I would say, is Black Diamond, Cold Gin, God of Thunder, um... Be shock me. Um, Heaven's on fire. Tears of falling. Crazy nights. Um, let's put the X in sex. Unholy. Hide your heart. I had other stuff in Psycho Circus. I have other stuff like you could maybe a hundred thousand years watching you. She making love. Radioactive. Sure knows something. Shandy. War machine. Reason to live. Turn on the night. Rise to it. I just want to, and like every time I look at you, those are like, okay, decent tracks, popular videos and things like that, but they're not killer classics. That So the top of the list that I would say, if you're going great, very best, you should have probably had black diamond, cold gin, God of thunder, heavens on fire, tears of falling, crazy nights, hide your heart, cycle circus. Now, what would you take off to put in there? I don't know. I mean, this is, I don't like God gave rock and roll to you, but it's very popular with the popular, with the kind of generic kiss fan. Um, you know, I look at this list and as much as you say, yeah, it's from the beginning. Those songs are the biggest songs of kiss with the exceptions of the ones that I think you should take out. I mean, there are what, only two songs from the original CD Black Diamond, No Cold Gin. You know, two songs from um, Harder Than Hell. Two songs from Rock and Roll, uh, from Dist- uh, Dress to Kill. Three songs from Detroit Rock City. Um, three songs from Rock and Roll Over, um, which I don't even think had any on Greatest Kiss. Um, three songs from Love Gun, which I would probably say to you, as much as you love I Stole Your Love and Christine 16 is kind of popular, those two songs are not bigger than Black Diamond or Cold Gin. And if you want a New York Roof, I can see that representing the, if you're going to represent the solo era, that needs to be in there. That's the biggest hit from the solo era. I, I was it for you, it has to be in there. I Love It Loud has to be in there. Lick It Up has to be in there. Forever, we always say Forever is the forgotten big hit by Kiss. Top 10 friggin' hit for them. How many do they have? Uh, two, three? And God Gave Rock and You is generic. Hey, everybody knows this song. Anthem. Um, I'm not sure, Tom. For me, again, make out God Gave Rock and Roll to you. Put in God of Thunder. Take out maybe uh, God to Choose. Put in Black Diamond. Take out maybe... Um, uh, Christine or all you love and you know put in uh I don't know if I said black diamond or cold gin put in one of those but 21 songs that I think that list is pretty good it's not thick but I think it's pretty good of literally saying up till then their biggest their biggest stuff not their best but their biggest hits yeah, I think for I think for an album called The Very Best of Kiss, I think this is a horribly assembled compilation album. Wow. I think it's I think really yeah, I think I think yeah. I think if you're gonna make it twenty one songs, you have to spread things a little bit thinner than they did. Like I said, fifteen songs off the first six albums, um, eighteen makeup songs, okay, and w- one song really sticks out like a sore thumb to me. I'm not saying it's a good I'm not saying it's not a good song, and I'm not saying people don't love it. Very best of Kiss, got to choose is not the very best of Kiss. You're talking about the very best of Kiss, okay? If you're gonna throw two songs off of Harder Than Hell, I don't like it. Let me go, rock and roll is a bigger song. Um, Parasite is a bigger song. 
Um, you know, and I think having, like you said, you get two songs from the debut album, two songs from Harder Than Hell, two songs from Dress to Kill, then three. I, I just think it's top heavy. And, and I understand, you know, w- what the point of the album well, is. What's a bigger song that you would put in in the top six? I, I'm with you on Got to Choose. And I'm almost with you on Harder Than Hell. You might not even have any if you're going to say big hits, but Harder Than Hell, they love to, Paul loves to play this. Got to choose. Okay, what goes in instead of got to choose? From Harder Than Hell? The first six, I would take out your favorite, I Stole Your Love. I would take out Christine 16. I would take out Got to Choose. And I would add Black Diamond, Cold Gin, and God of Thunder. Those three are better and bigger songs. Probably right. I think the only reason why I I Stole Your Love and Christine 16 are not all, I think they're bigger hits because of Alive 2 than they are off the studio album. Um, yeah, I mean, I know I Stole Your Love is probably better than a lot of his songs. Yeah. It's just not a bigger hit. It's a cult favorite. And God bless them that they put it on because if somebody heard this song, they might be like, holy shit, I don't really know this about Kiss. Maybe I need to get into them more. I love that song. Don't yeah. hear it much. I think but God. It's not a bigger hit than Cold General Diamond or God of Thunder. Yeah, I think God gave rock and roll to you on here. The only reason I could see that on here is because it was it was a huge hit. Granted, it was a huge hit. 10 years before this album came out this came out in 2002 revenge came out in 92 yeah it was uh, on a soundtrack no right right they were playing it at the end of their concerts they like were promoting you, they did a video for it and like you said i hate to say it but I mean, psycho circus should probably be on here i mean and if you're gonna I fucking hate that song no, yeah exactly no, I, I, I know i just think it's i think if you're gonna take 21 songs and call it the very best you have to be very selective about what you're putting in there yeah, and if we did the very best, Tom, half of these songs wouldn't be in there. We'd have all the deep cuts. No, but, no, no, no. I'm not even saying that. I'm not even I'm saying, saying me and you object right. like subjectively. Say- we'd be saying that. But I'm saying if we were going to make a uh, look, I don't think you need. Okay, I, I don't think you need. I want you from Rock and Roll Over. That's just me. Yeah, Hard Luck Woman because it was a top twenty, I think, single. Uh, calling Dr. Love is still a staple. I want you. You're right. You don't need three songs. And I love rock and roll over. You know, I do. Yeah. I don't think you need it. I think rock and roll over is great because of its depth, not because yep. it has bigger like hits like God, of, God of thunder should be in there before I want you. Yeah. Not even close. Yeah. I, um, I think the questionable ones for me are got to choose and God gave rock and roll to you. The other song, although I don't, I disagree with how they assembled it because it's top heavy, but I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to argue specifically with the song selection other than probably got to choose God gave rock and roll to you. Maybe I want you. I mean, Christine okay. six, Christine 16 is on the edge. I don't think, I mean, for me, I love it, but very best. Eh, I don't know. All right. So here's another part. I, I, 79 on dynasty and on i would say those four songs are the correct songs to be there i was made for loving you i love it loud lick it up and forever yeah but i mean i know tears are falling heaven's Heaven's on fire fire. crazy nights those those need to be there if you're talking if if you're talking about the very best okay what is heaven's on fire replaced god gave rock and roll to you loud not lick it up no god gave rock and roll to you Heavens on Fire was a much, especially with the MTV video generation, yeah, much bigger, right. much, much bigger song than God gave rock and roll to you. Much bigger. They they play in not. I mean, they play in Heavens on Fire now on the end of the road tour. Yeah, I mean, I guess you know, I you know, it's funny because just the title of a compilation makes the difference. Very best versus greatest hits. Or, you know, things like that. Because you're like, oh, it's a bigger hit. Uh, God gave rock and roll. got more airplay probably than Heavens on Fire did. Okay. Right? Because the video and the movie and the soundtrack. You know, the best makes me think you'd be doing deep cuts. You think this is good? Go listen to Mr. Speed. You think this is good? Go listen to It's All Right by Paul Saint. Go listen to uh, Nowhere to Run. Like, those are the best of Kiss. That's not the greatest Kiss because the, I mean, greatest hit. But there's different ways of looking at this. I just, you know, if you're looking at non-makeup Kiss, Heaven's on Fire, Falling, Crazy Nights, you know, Hide Your Heart. Those are oh, Unholy. Those Unholy's are the Unholy's like Domino. 
Yeah, but then you're starting to get into now you got to make this a double CD. You're making tough cuts here. I think this, honestly, it's not perfect. But I think, first of all, in, uh, I just think it's a solid up to that point of the era. Encompasses all eras, except that it doesn't cover. Because um, if you think about it, God Gave Rock and Roll is technically revenge. It just doesn't cover the last two albums, Carnival Soul and uh, and Side Circus. And Paul had not at this point when this came out in 2002 yet to shove cycle our throats to say, oh, Psycho Circus is a classic today because he hadn't that's done true. it yet. So that's maybe true. that's why I didn't make it at that point. So maybe that makes sense that it's not on now that I'm thinking about it. Right. Because it's no, only, right, this it, is 2002. It was- Right, it's only a few years removed from the release. I think if they were going to do a, 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 what I would have preferred here would be, like, if you're gonna, how do you, you, you only took two songs from each of the first three albums, and then you went and took three songs from each of the next three, like it's yeah. like who, who put this together and like, harder than hell. Okay, we don't like that song, but got to choose, got to choose is a borderline. I know it was on a live. That's yeah. a borderline mid-level deeper cut off that album. Yeah, I it's mean, a borderline. It's not a, none of the a lot. Kiss doesn't have hits, but they popular, have popular songs. Right, that's popular what I mean. Popular songs. Yeah, you know. Let, let's be honest. It's in Kiss. You know, where does "Got to Choose" is a pretty big song. It's not a uh, you know forgotten track. It's considered, I would say, a compilation type song, but it's. A guarantee has to be like Colgin. How is Colgin not on this? That makes no sense. God of Thunder is not on this. Black Diamond is not on this. You and that's the thing. And you, and, and you call and you call this the very best of yeah. Kiss. Yeah, it, it, it's. I, I, I've. I, you know, we, we've said this before when we did greatest hits, uh, greatest Kiss. You know, we're not record executives or whatever, but I, I would like to know who's behind the selection of these songs. Does the band have anything to do with this? Is it like the record company just slapping things on, you know, another, another issue uh, is there, is there like record label agreements or something? Maybe certain songs can't be on this compilation. I don't know. Cause it, it's just a very questionable compilation in my opinion. Yeah. I, th- you know, missing a couple of those songs, but I think it's, you know, I guess you can make a reasonable argument that this is pretty complete. I think it's missing stuff because that's why I have a fucking kiss podcast because I'm particular. You know what I mean? Yeah. But most people picking this up, we'd be like, oh, wow. I mean, we all love come on and love me. But come on and love me. is not bigger than Colgin. It's, no, it's not. not. It's not no, it's bigger not. than Black Diamond. Colgin and Black Diamond have been a staple in the live uh, live concerts. Forever, come on and I love they, me is not. I think the problem God they had is not even hotter than not. hell is not. No, I want I think you they had a, not. And I Hard think they had a hard Woman time with. I stole yeah, I love they, Christian sixteen. Sorry, I'm just gotta no, get no. this part out. No, no, no. Go ahead. And I'm like uh, New York Groove is not. Um, forever definitely is not. Forever was a top ten hit, but like. Those aren't in a staples that they have to play. And when you think about it, it's like almost the end of the road because it's so vanilla. They're set lists. Like, those are it. You got to get these in. But th- a bunch of those songs aren't on this. Yeah. And I think they, I think they were, I think they, they were, had trouble with Destroyer because Destroyer was a hit, uh, a hit loaded album. You know, you, you can't, you can't leave Beth off. You can't leave Shout It Out Loud off. You can't leave Detroit Rock City off. But you're not going to put four songs from one album on a compilation. And uh, God bless it. I know it's our namesake. Oh, shout it out loud. Oh. <laughs> but, 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 yeah, but, but if you're making the very best of, you have to have that in there. That's a. Yeah, I know. I know. Because it's on the classic rock radio. You listen yeah. to the classic rock radio, you, you can hear Shout It Out Loud. That, that will come on. Yep. You know, but Got to Choose is not. You could hear Cold General Black Diamond. You're not going to hear friggin' I don't know what else is on there. I want you. I think that I think it's interesting too. Like we said at the beginning of this discussion, was that there's no variations on these uh, from any country. 
Um, yeah. I mean, great, greatest kiss. You had like three or four different versions that were all terrific. This, you, they just threw this out and said, Hey, fucking eat it. Kiss fans. You <laughs> <laughs> saw He said, eat a dick. Kiss. Fans. Yeah. Pretty, pretty much, pretty much. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I just, you know, for that era, I think, you know, it encompasses a lot compared to the, you know, we're all kiss fans. For as much as we put this on there, you're going to have fucking 10 million people. Oh, what the fuck? They didn't yep. put rock and ride. Oh, my God. What's wrong? They didn't put plastic caster. You know, don't no, you know. think we're going to get that? Probably. I know. I know. Yeah. So, you know, it, it, it's hard to satisfy the Kiss Army. That's why oh, there yeah. are a million uh, podcasts out there and a million Facebook toxic facebook groups um yep. you know so yeah so that is um the very best of kiss now before we move on from this tom yeah we have this we're not going to pair this to the box set compilation the box set will have five cds we'll compare those five cds to each other but we have one other compilation and that is greatest kiss now let me help by starting this in my opinion, this is better than Greatest Kiss. Oh, God, you're fucking way off. No, I think this is better than Greatest Kiss, um, especially the U.S. version. First of all, it's 21 songs, okay? Um and anything that has fucking flaming youth on it over any of these songs is insane. Um, you know, that had Do You Love Me and a couple other. Now, if we get into the various editions of Greatest Kiss, like the European Australian version where there is cold gin in there, there, um, you know, shock in there, maybe it's as good. But I would probably say, and God of Thunder is on there, I would probably take the very best of Kiss over that. But maybe the, um, you know, the Japanese and Australian vo- uh, version. We are comparing this to the American version of Greatest Kiss. And I would take best better than Greatest Kiss if I could take one compilation with me. Nope. Okay, good. We dis- Good. I'm glad we disagree because... The very best of Kiss has New York Groove. Sucks. Lick it up. Sucks. God gave rock and roll to you. Mediocre at best. I love it loud. Never want to hear it again. None of those songs are on Greatest Kiss. Greatest Kiss give, gives me sure no something. Do you love me? Um, Plastic Caster. Cold Gin. Two sides of the coin. Um, you know, there's nothing... All the extra... All the songs that are on Very Best of Kiss that are not on Greatest Kiss... I could give a shit about. Um, I understand it has, you know, forever. Lick it up. I, I will tell you right hear. now how I am shocked to hear you say that. You need to tell me, you, Tomas, who's probably two Mount Rushmore Kiss songs, is Come On and Love Me and I Stole Your Love. I agree. No, you're right. On greatest, right? That's why I'm shocked. And you hate, not hate, but you have no affinity for Flaming Youth or I, another no, version of Beth. Or no, but two I think sides of the coin shout it out no, live, live. The tipping the point here six songs. I mean, five more songs, Tom. Just for that, I would take it. The tipping point is New York Groove. I hate lick it up. I, it, I you know, yeah, I know. Got, got, got to choose. It's mediocre. Uh, yeah, I, you're right. It has I Stole Your Love. It has, you know, it has Come On and Love Me, my number one and my two all time favorite Kiss songs. So it, it is kind of a weird thing. But you if I'm definitely- taking a. Co- but if I'm taking a compilation, if I'm grading the compilations, I prefer Greatest Kiss. I don't have a problem wow. with Very Best of Kiss. I don't have a problem with Very Best of Kiss. I think it's well done. Because it's Kiss. I, <laughs> but of course, yeah, of course. But I would, I would probably take. Well, you know, plus Show sure No Something kind of balances out. Come on and love me, and I stole your love because Show sure No Something is probably on my Mount Rushmore of Kiss songs as well. So it might be on mine a, as well, and I don't like that it's missing. Yeah, but it's, it's a tough pick. Too many, like. Does that need to be there? Hard luck right. woman. Do you love me? Christine 16. Even in strutters, just tiring. You know, flaming you two. 
sides of the and it's got five more songs. Yeah, but half of the half of, so that's where I would. half of the songs you just named are on very best of kiss strutter one you know, uh what were the what were the other ones you, hard luck woman that's on that's on very best of kiss no, I know, but love- there's still five more songs. So you're talking about it's taking a bigger percentage of the compilation. No, you're right. By having these songs. So, you know, Ooh. if you took those both out from both of those CDs, it's still a better CD. That's what I'm saying. You wipe those out. Yeah. Regardless. Oh, one other thing. What do you yeah. what about artwork on these compilations? What do you think of that? Um ugh. I would I, probably I pro- take this over greatest kick. Yes. Yeah, me too. Me too. Definitely. Right? Yeah, the the, 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 the CD. The best part of Greatest Kiss is the back picture. The the back picture on Greatest Kiss is probably the best part of the artwork. I think the artwork on Very Best of is much much better. Yeah. I like this artwork on the back. I like that it's, you know, 79 and earlier Kiss and, you know, 96 and on Kiss makeup, yep. you know. Agreed. Agreed. All right. So that was a good one, Tom. Yep. Let's uh let's move this along. Long we go into after this questions, buddy. What do we got? Okay, so this is a question from one of our Twitter friends. I I'm, I'm asking this one primarily because it's it's topical. He he sent this probably a week or so ago. This is from our friend in Australia, Mister 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 Zandon Black. So he asks this question. He Zandon's says, "Zandon's awesome. He asks yeah. a lot. He interacts with us a lot." So yeah. what's up, buddy? We're happy. And I, and, I, and I pulled this one out of the hat a little bit earlier than, than I probably would have just because of its topical. So he said, with Paul sick with the flu and canceling shows, if Paul or Gene died, <laughs> oh, he, God. he says, does the show go on? Do they do? Do they get new members? Like what happens? And he says, also, could Stuart survive this if the band continued without Paul and Gene? Stuart can go eat a dick. Um, but yeah, I think they would grieve, do exactly what the Eagles are doing. Glenn Fry died. How can they go on without Glenn Fry and Don Henley? All of a sudden, Glenn Fry's son comes in. They bring in a guy like Vince Neal who's helped them out on other stuff before. And now you have credibilities covered. So no one can be like and they do a couple tours. They do a couple small like place. Not a couple, a short tour, and they get away with it, sell out all over the place. Is anybody going to bitch if Paul's son stepped in or if Gene's son stepped in to help out and do that? People be like, no, if Gene's family is on with this, I'm on with this, you know? And same thing with Paul. Would you be pissed if Paul can't do the tour and all of a sudden Todd Kearns comes in and sings? I'd probably be excited. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, yeah. Right? Could you right. imagine if Todd, th- Todd came in? I think the only way this would fly, like oh. you said, the, the, on, the only way people would accept this is if it was Gene's son taking over for him and if it was Paul's son taking over for him. Then people would be like, okay, they keep it in the family, respectful. But I think if Todd Kearns came in and put the, the star child makeup on, I think it would be awesome. There'd be people would there'd be a full blown fucking riot in the streets if that happened. But he's dead. Uh, what yeah. are you gonna do? They need somebody. Why not? I don't. I don't know. think. I don't think it would be that bad. I think if Todd did it now with Paul, just fine. They might be shit. I don't know, but I think I think he would be an awesome replacement. Okay. Well, what if Paul wasn't? What if put it this way? What if Paul wasn't dead? But he was incapacitated. If this illness turns out to be something more serious, no, no. If, if they took a terrible tumble down a flight this, of stairs, if this illness turns out to be something more serious, and Paul is sidelined like indefinitely, and in, in, like in, in their options are to either take Todd Kearns with the Star Child makeup, or you know, then what? Uh, take Todd Kearns. Absolutely. I, I'm sorry. Is Brian Johnson dead? Right. Agreed. Hey. Axel Rose came on and was like, fuck, Axel's doing a great job. And the band's okay with it. So if Gene's okay with it and Paul's okay with it, why not put Todd? And then that's a nice segue. If I mean, I'll be honest with you. Todd running doing the Paul Stanley, Kiss could go on another five or seven years with Gene, Eric, and Tommy. Absolutely. Yep. 
Agreed. And then you get somebody to replace Gene after a while, and they can go on 10 years. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Just throwing it out there, Todd. Wink, wink. All right. Um, it's a so good question. That, yeah, thank you, Zen. Awesome. All right, here's another one. Quit this this one. This answer probably won't be as long. This is from uh, Facebook, Mister Ray Kurtzinger. What Ray. do you think about What do you think about Kiss doing an updated version of Kiss Meets the Phantom of the Park? Would they ever consider doing another live action movie? We know that they've done the cartoon movies, the Scooby Doo shit. Would they ever do another live action movie? No. And that wraps up our questions. <laughs> I told I, I totally no, no, absolutely not. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree with you, which is unfortunate because so here, here's the thing that that's interesting to me. They have no problem doing an animated show with with a kid's cartoon Scooby Doo. But I think we both agree that they would never do a live movie. Why? why? I don't know. Explain why. something to you. Let me look. Yeah, well, well, you know. <laughs> so the monkeys had their TV show. Oh, here we go. Do you remember when they did their comeback and they became popular again because all oh, the nostalgia because VH1 and MTV were playing the monkeys episodes again in the eighties. No, do I remember don't remember that. No. Okay. I do. Okay. O- other people might remember this. The monkeys came back because MTV, they did a very monkeys weekend and they played all monkeys episodes and yeah. they did it. They came back and they did a tour and all of a sudden, Mickey Dolan's and Peter Talk and all them were out there, and they started touring again. For a little while, they did a new Monkeys. Yep, and did like the same campy Monkeys episodes for a little while. Yeah, okay, they did it. It just didn't work the same, right? So, like, can Kiss come back and do that? They don't have that sense of humor like those guys did. Well, I don't think that it's just worked a- because there was always campy and it was meant to be campy when they did their show. So the comeback campy thing worked. Kiss fan of the park is beyond just campy. Paul would never, ever put himself up for humiliation like that again. Never. Yeah. And I also think, too, right now, the band is not in the public consciousness the way they were in 1978 when they did Phantom. I think right now, if Kiss did like a live action movie, I mean, the closest that they came to ever doing a live action movie was their appearance in uh, Detroit Rock City, but that was them on stage performing as Kiss. I, I think that would be the closest thing you'd ever see. With uh, the guy, what's the guy? They did the other movie um, with the boyfriend who the father didn't like the son, in, the future son in law. Oh, Remember? Uh, they did the uh, cameo. Why, why him? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 I mean, who's going to watch this besides. Us kiss nerds and David Zanet. <laughs> hey, Paisan. Uh, look, it's, it's, it's in a movie. What's up, David? How are you, buddy? We David, love we love David. you, buddy. Maybe, ki- uh, maybe we kiss. We always go- give a shout out every episode to this buddy. He's our maybe, man. Maybe kiss meets the Tower of Pisa. They go to Italy. <laughs> <and> then- <laughs> <laughs> they run into David and David has to help them. They get mistaken for a spy and it's a big adventure scrolling through Rome. And Gene is on a fucking moped with David escaping from people shooting at him. I think that would be great. And then they pull the mask off David and it's really Vinnie Vincent chasing him around Italy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, David. Good, good oh, stuff. Man. Good stuff. Great questions. Yep. Uh, Tom, where can people find us? So you can email us at shout it out loudcast at gmail.com. Shout it out loudcast at gmail.com. Um, you can find us everywhere. Obviously, if you're listening to us, you knew where to find us, but tell your friends. We're on Apple Podcast, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify, YouTube. Um, and we're also a proud member of the Pantheon Podcast Network. Tons of great music rock history discussion podcasts on pantheon you can check them out on twitter and facebook um and itunes as well um so yeah we're everywhere out there yeah people interact with us twitter facebook instagram uh we've been getting a lot we talked about it last week a lot of messages so people hit us up on dm on twitters they've hit us up on dms on instagram And they can hit us on Facebook with direct messages as well. Emails have gone up tremendously. Thank you. We love hearing from you guys. 
Um, the other thing that we love and we talk about is all the time is when you guys can give us a, uh, a review, a five star trial uh, review on iTunes helps people find us on pod chaser as well. Keep those reviews up. It's a big help to us and make sure you tell us, Hey, Shitheads, I just gave you a five-star review. We'd love to thank you and give you a big shout-out. Lots of times on the reviews, I have no idea who's who um, because they're using different you know, nicknames from what we know you as your Twitter handle or your Facebook name. So let us know when you do that. We'll definitely give you a shout-out and thank you very much. So having said that, um, famous last words. You can walk in a haze. You can travel till you die. You can live in a dream and your life will pass you by. Nice. (laughs) Deep thoughts. Tom. Tom can do an unbelievable impression in this. I started the episode like this. I'm going to end it like this. Many years since I was here on the street. I was passing my time away to the left and to the right building to the sky. It's out of sight in the dead of night. (laughs) And I go, (laughs) and I go, no, (laughs) it took the eye, the poison eye. (laughs) Hey, I, real real quick before we sign off, people, we are aware that we had some Skype issues tonight, technical difficulties, so bear with us. We hope you enjoyed the show, uh, even though we got cut out a little bit so here and there. But uh, thank you guys, as always. We love the fact that you're uh, following us and interacting and uh, being involved, uh, so we love it. Thank you guys so much. The best KISS podcast fans out there, thank you very much, Tom. Thank you, KISS Army. Thank you. Until next time, peace out, Girl Scout.